Shalom. Shalom and welcome, O Set Apart Awakening Nation. Welcome to White Roads family. My brothers and sisters, if you read Revelations 7th chapter, specifically the ninth verse, even the chapter in its entirety, you will discover that there is a great multitude with white robes that will emerge out of the tribulation with white robes washed in the blood of the Lamb. Could this be literal as well as spiritual? Evidence will prove in the coming days. But ask yourself this, O set apart nation, wash white robes in the blood of the Lamb. That describe actions that requires obedience to the Almighty Father, Yahuwah. In the name of Yahushua, I say to you, pay close attention, my brothers and sisters. This segment, you see me with red on because I want to drive home that I have been given the conviction to reflect specific colors and make them with some of the purposes of the feast days. And I won't go through all each color, but for atonement, it is red. But before I continue, let me present the following. Please read this, my brothers and sisters. I will not take the time to insult your intelligence or to consume time reading it. But what's most important is that you agree to hold me harmless of any influence and or actions that arise as a result of watching, listening, and reviewing this content, as well as be mindful the views expressed do not reflect the owners, management, and or shareholders of this media platform. With that said, let's move on. My brothers and sisters, this segment, the Most High have stirred upon me and compelled me to present this segment. Wineskins, new versus old. Discern the difference. And we're going to visit Matthew 9, 17 in a minute, my brothers and sisters. Wineskins, new versus old. I want you to take a moment and ponder prayerfully. What does wineskins mean to you? Now let's look at the literal. Back in the day, my brothers and sisters, even to this day, there may be some who took skins and put wine in to preserve it, to hold it. Thus, they were wine skins, the whole wine. And if you put brand new wine in old wine skins, it is said in the scriptures that they would burst. You see the body of that wine, the embodiment, the texture has some elements in it that have not fermented, that have not moved to a state that is mature. It's full bodied in such a way that it would burst old wine skin. So you put new wine in new wine skin. The same with old wine skins. They have adapted to the content and both have aged over a period of time, whether it's a short time or a long time the wine as well as the wine skin. And there's some significance to this, my brothers and sisters. But as we go into it, prayerfully, listen, let's move forward. I want you to visit Matthew 9, 14 through 17 and consider these words, O Yasharal. Then the taught ones of Yehonan came to him saying, why do we and Pharisees fast often? but your taught ones do not fast. And Yahushua said to them, are the friends of the bridegroom able to mourn as long as the bridegroom is with them? But the day shall come when the bridegroom is taken away from them and then they shall fast. And no one put a piece of unshrunk cloth on an old garment for the patch pulls away from the garment and the tear is made worse. Neither do they put new wine into old wineskins or else the wineskins burst and the wine is spilled and the wineskins are ruined. But they put new wine into fresh wineskins 
and both are preserved. That was Matthew chapter 9, verse 14, 14 through 17. My brothers and sisters, are you aware that in the sixth chapter of Revelation, I believe it was the sixth chapter. Let me double check, bear with me, so I won't misquote the address, my brothers and sisters. But what I'm referencing is I spoke on it. It's where the Most High said, do not hurt the oil in the wine. I believe it was the sixth chapter of Revelation. Yashara, and I spoke on how it is my belief that wine represents those preserved for various times. Okay, uh, Do, do not harm the oil and the wine. Revelation 6, 6. Revelation 6, 6, my brothers and sisters. And I believe the oil meant do not harm the anointed that has been preserved for such a time as this. Now, linking that to wineskins, my brothers and sisters, there are individuals we will meet who have developed certain habits and behaviors and practices some good, some not so good. Some have contributed towards the body of Yasharal coming together. But for such a time as this, my brothers and sisters, as we are renewed as the preserved of the Almighty Father, preserved for such a time as this, anointed by the Almighty Father, we are placed in new wine skins. In other words, the spear of our beliefs, our thoughts, the abilities that we have in discerning the Most High brings about a renewal, brings about a stage in our lives that differ from those of our yesterday. What I'm saying, my brothers and sisters, there are some for many years, just like some among us have come out of different religious beliefs, but there are certain habits and behaviors that we held on to, that we're still wrestling with. For such a time as this, my brothers and sisters, the scripture talk about, remember, where you've fallen. If you look in Revelations, in the first three chapters, you'll find twice, at least twice, we are encouraged to remember where we've fallen. If we, we search the scriptures, we will realize that, as Shaul say, we die day by day, we are renewed by the Spirit of Yahushua. We become as new wineskins, my brothers and sisters, as we are enlightened to more, as we readily get under the blood of the Lamb, the atoning blood of the Lamb, as we readily seek forgiveness, as we readily yield to correctness, as we readily move beyond reproof and rise up new, we become as new wine and new wineskins, my brothers and sisters. Pray and watch. For renewal has an, a very critical point in our lives. As set apart children of Yashara, we must understand what it is to be renewed, to be as wine and new wine skin. We must understand the old wine skin that is left behind. Like I said, some did good things, some not so good. But nevertheless, the sun has set on many the breath the last breath of many have gone, come and gone as old wineskins. There are those who were obedient to the Almighty Father. And for them, I say thank you and hallelujah, but their time has come and gone. There are those who are trying to hold on to old habits. But for such a time as this, we are awakened to bring Yashara together. The 145,000 in great multitude is about to rise, my brothers and sisters. Pray and watch. My brothers and sisters, for such a time as this, the great awakening, 
We will witness things that were hidden become unveiled. And we see that now. And it will magnify and it will increase. The question is, what will you do, O Yasharal? What am I doing? What are we doing? Are we going in circles, Yasharal? Are we pressing forward and set of partners and in obedience? Come with me as I visit Matthew 10 chapter. Verse 26 to 28. And as I read this, think about discern how to respond correctly with each encounter of things that are uncovered. Do we beat up on one another? Do we beat up or do we seek to be used by the Almighty Father to restore such a one and to correctness? Is restoring by words that come from us by the Spirit of Yahushua? Or does it require action, such as purging that person away from us until they yield to the correct words we presented before them? Is restoring such a one meaning come away from them after you've told them what is correct and they yet reject it? Hear these words, O Yashara, as I read them. Matthew 10, 26-28 says, Therefore, do not fear them. For whatever is covered shall be revealed. Whatever is hidden shall be made known. What I say to you in the dark, speak in the light, and what you hear in the ear, proclaim on the housetops. And do not fear those who kill the body, but are unable to kill the being, but rather fear him who is able to destroy both being and body in hell or Gehenna. My brothers and sisters, the great awakening has begun. There's no doubt in my mind, Yasharal, we will witness individuals grow strong and set of partners. We will witness Understanding what new wine skins and old wine skins, why it is why we are told not to try to put new wine in old wine skins. So if someone is carrying an old belief, an old position, and they're stubborn, let us seek to discern what the spirit of Yeshua has to say as it relates to renewing them, making them new as new wine skins so that they can receive the new information. Now some will say, oh, he's saying new, there's nothing new under the sun. Granted, I receive that. But to some individuals, the experience is new. To some individuals, it is new to them for that time, minute, and second, they were not alive 10 seconds ago. In terms of if they was walking in incorrectness, they were off the path or they were missing the marks, so to speak. My brothers and sisters, as we are renewed by the blood of the lamb, it doesn't mean we go back and be like we was. When it say, remember where you fall, it doesn't say go back and stay the way you were when you first got, when you first became awakening. It means go back to get on track, my brothers and sisters, that we may move into matureness, that we may move as new wineskins with new wine. Pray and watch, my brothers and sisters. End times are here. The scriptures will come alive and there is so much that we can receive from them when they are made alive by Yahushua Mashiach. Remember, it is written, the first will be last and the last will be first. My brothers and sisters, visit Matthew 20, 16. It bears, with, it bears witness to these words. You see, my brothers and sisters, there are individuals who will tell you, I've been in this walk for 30, 40, 50 years. And there are individuals who are newly awakening. And they're discovering things that people that have been in this walk a long time did not recognize or are stubborn and don't want to release. One of the biggest things man will face 
It's when the truth emerged regarding when a day began and ends. When the truth emerged, how to measure a new month. When the truth emerged of the purpose of the new moon. When the truth emerged regarding purposes of the feast times. In addition to what they mean and present literally, there is a spiritual power in the purposes of the feast time. And I believe it is a vetting tool. It is an examination tool for vetting. Aren't you tired of making mistakes getting in the wrong community? Aren't you weary of stepping into fellowships that you have been burned, neglected, or abused? Aren't you tired of the pain that comes with people that take advantage of you? Yes, you're all. Unless we begin to identify with a ready mind, body, and soul. Those who quick are quick to real to yield and receive the blood of the Lamb of Yusha and yield to correctness. Unless we begin to vet and begin to discern what is true, what is correct, and have the power and strength to come away. Or purge them from our midst. The pain and regrets will continue. Aren't you tired of the mistakes? The feast time. Begin to vet. It takes time, but ask questions. There's some key terms at the bottom of this screen and many screens that I show. Ask the questions. Inquire of the individuals. And if they're out of step, if they're out of sync with what the Most High is saying to his children, they may bring more problems than contribute towards the growth that is necessary to grow strong. The first will be last and the last will be first. Why? Because the last are in the midst of conditions that bring about a stirring, a drawing from the Almighty Father that they are more ready to recognize than many people who have been in this walk for a long time or many days. Or many people who have read the scriptures and say, oh, I know that, I knew that. The Mashiach spoke of his word being like endless water. He said we would never thirst. Are we around individuals that know how to look at the scriptures as they come towards us alive, giving us more and more each day? Do we recognize the living presence of the spirit of Yahushua as our teacher, our guide? In the name of Yahuwah, in the name of Yahushua, for they are one. I say to you, my brothers and sisters, what are you willing to do? What are you willing to say? What do you hear? What do you see? What do you discern? It's time that fellowship one with another. Yielding to the spirit of usual working in us one towards another. That time is now to recognize the importance of subjecting ourselves one to another. As it is mentioned in Ephesians 5.21. My brothers and sisters. Time will come. When we will recognize some that will be last. Will not be among the gathered. Some who will wait too late will find themselves left behind. Pray and watch, my brothers and sisters. End times are here. Wineskins, new wineskins. Safety and refuge is paramount. Do you believe that the Almighty Father gave Noah plans when he laid out how to build the ark, how to construct it? Do you believe he gave him plans on the timing of building the ark? Are you aware that when the scriptures say like in the days of Noah and like in the days of Lot, it's not just saying that they were marrying and going about business as usual. It's so much to learn from those stories alone. And specifically, instructions, plans, and they were executed. In other words, they, they were implemented, my brothers and sisters. And we see that out of Noah and his family, they were saved. We see that Lot and his family were saved. Save his wife who looked back. And his son-in-laws who thought he was joking. Plans are real, my brothers and sisters. 
There is no one on this planet that have the one and only plan unless he or she is walking in the fullness of the spirit of Yahuwah and is directed and guided into the plan that he has. But I say to you, it say we prophesy in part, we teach in part. Bring the parts together and witness Yahshua begin to become complete. I believe the Almighty Father has given me a plan, a plan that will prove to contribute towards Yahshua gathering together, that will prove to support, confirm, and reaffirm the emergence of the 144,000, 12,000 from each of the 12 tribes of Yahshua, as mentioned in the scripture, along with a great multitude of many nations, kindreds, and tongues consisting of Abraham, commonly known as Hebrews and Gentiles, also known as Goyim, other nations, who together seek to do the will of the Almighty Father, who together in the name of Yahushua will come and will find themselves being gathered together. And those who will die as martyrs for Yahushua's name, they will still be in unity with those gathered in these final days. Yasharal, O Yasharal, it's time to discern living orders. It's time to realize that plans require discipline. What say you, my brothers and sisters? Are you ready? You know, there are things that have been said over the years that fuel laziness, slothfulness, that causes one to not fear the Almighty Father, not seek to discern what he is saying, makes one quick to dismiss the obedient. Are we not aware, my brothers and sisters, that it was religious people, religious leaders that rejected the obedience of the Almighty Father? Are we not aware that it was Pharisees, Sadducees, and other influential individuals that contributed to the physical death of many of our forefathers and the prophets? Have you ever taken a moment to say, am I in that audience? Am I in that group? Am I rejecting the obedience from those who are around me or whom I am in company with? My brothers and sisters, be mindful before you're quick to reject the things that come. Fear in Yahuwah is important. Case in point, my brothers and sisters, I see so many brothers and I just ask myself, what would give them the gall to sit there and, and, and talk about fear mongering and dismissing fear without a qualifier. We're not to fear what man can do to us. We're not to fear what man can do to these bodies, but we are to fear Yahuwah, the almighty one. And for someone to chuckle and say, oh, you know what I mean? Oh, I shouldn't have to say that. We should say that with fear and trembling, let us prepare. Many of us don't realize how so great a cloud of witnesses are those that prevent the person from texting and running and killing you or your daughter or your son or your loved one. Many are unaware that so great a cloud of witness are preventing you from being in the wrong place at the wrong time when there are mass shootings. Many don't realize that so great a cloud of witnesses led by the power and might of the spirit of Yahuwah is what brings about the protection and covering I say to you, O Yasharal, let us not take for granted the breath that we have, nor the reason we've received it. The fear of Yahuwah brings knowledge and refuge and more. Let me read what I just put up, my brothers and sisters. Proverbs 1, 7 says, the fear of Yahuwah is the beginning of knowledge. Fools despise wisdom and discipline. You see, my brothers and sisters, discipline hurts. Wisdom hurts. Why does wisdom hurt? Because we start saying, oh, that seems so simple. How did I not know that? And so we beat up on ourselves. Sometimes we're trying to preserve our egos. Sometimes we're trying to preserve our pride or our position of leadership or influence. Not realizing if we yield to the blood of the lamb, yield to reproof and correction, we can rise up stronger, a better me, a better you. Fear Yahuwah, my brothers and sisters. And then we will begin to discern more and more the knowledge that is necessary for completing end time task. And as I speak on forced migration, forced movement, know this, my brothers and sisters, end times will prove that people will be looking for shelter, refuge, where they can be safe. 
Some will look because they are moved by the spirit of Yahuwah to move into safety. And then there will be those that are looking for safety, can care less. They're just trying to save their own lives. You see, qualifiers must be presented before you, before us, before me, O Yasharal. Let me read about refuge. Proverbs 14, 26 say, In the fear of Yahuwah is strong trust, and his children have a place of refuge. My brothers and sisters, Let me ask you, when they say a place of refuge, how many of us have realized that means we may have to move? That means some may have to shelter in place. You see, my brothers and sisters, it's about being in the right place at the right time. Those who dismiss the fear of Yahuwah, those who talk about against fear mongering without a qualifier, beware of such. Just as those who promote a pre-tribulation rapture, beware of such. It promotes laziness. And I've said this before. It promotes one saying, oh, I'm not worried. Y'all got my back. I'm not worried. I'm going to be out of here sooner or later. I'm going to be raptured. Oh, I don't fear anything. I'm fearless. Pray and watch, my brothers and sisters, as end time ramp ups, the cowardice in people will come. And the true spirit of that person will show itself. Some will be restored and corrected by the blood of the Lamb, and in the set apart spirit made anew, and some will not. Some will face sickness and physical death. Pray, O Yasharal, for there is space for new wine to go into new wineskins. But don't try to hold on to something that is an old teaching that may be off some. And I'm not saying the teachings of Yahuwah or set of partners is old. I'm talking about people who have developed certain habits and behaviors that they're unwilling to let go. One may be when they guard Shabbat, when they discover the truth that is from morning to morning. One is when they discover that Yahuwah in the name of Yahushua wants us to hem our garments with a cord of purple and not have phylacteries dangling and swinging from our waist or our garments, whether it be the four quote unquote zit zits or whether it be the fringes dangling around the waistline. My brothers and sisters, we will learn that it's fringe mean edge and the instruction was to hem the garment with a thread, with a cord of purple. We will learn that blue and red brings purple. The word of the Most High through the blood of the Lamb together brings purple. Together brings us into an alignment with what is right. You see, those are some difficult things that people will say, I don't know if I can do that. But if you seek to be among the ranks of those gathered, if you seek to be among the ranks of those who will be called the children of obedience. If you seek and believe and expect that you will be a strong child of the Almighty Father and a martyr for Yahushua's name or one who is among the ranks of the 144,000 great multitude that will be gathered from the four corners of the earth, prepare to yield to what is correct. Prepare to be renewed and reflect new wineskin. A new you, a new me, a new us. Yasharal, this is the time. The time is now to discover what must and will be done. And I say this often. It's not about, Yasharal, it is not about saying that, well, if you guys get it right, if you if you listen, if you pay attention to me, no, 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 no. Know this. Prophecies are just that, my brothers and sisters. Promises from the Most High. Information, warning, instructions, and guidance. Things will, must, and will come to be. The question is, what would be your position, the one in the mirror? What would be my position? What would be our position? But make no mistake, all that is promised will come to be, O oh, Yasharal. The time is now.
Y'all sure all. Some of you probably tired of me saying we're going to relocate. It's going to be forced migration. They're going to be lifestyle changes. But as I state often, a warning, a siren will repeat itself over and over to no longer need it. There will be those included and those left behind. It's time for us to begin to count the costs. As for White Rose family, I believe the Most High has given me a plan that is a part, a portion of what will contribute towards the gathering of a set apart nation before the great gathering from the four corners of the earth. Highlights of the plan that White Rose family have is to build a set apart team of leaders that have been vetted, that have been identified by the vetting tools that the Most High has given, that have been identified by the discerning power of Yahushua working within me and those who are truly chosen. I will build a team as the Most High has developed and it will not be for my sake. It is for the sake of the Most High as a contributor as he is leading me. You see, I have no problems of yielding to obedience. I struggle, I fight. Do I stumble and fall? Indeed I do. But know this, O Yasharal, I must still press on. I must practice and exercise the very thing I preach. And know this, there will be a set apart team of leaders. In this plan that I believe the Most High has given me, we will develop an information and resource center. Imagine someone wants to relocate and don't know how. Imagine one wants to just be closer to other set apart ones, but don't know how to relocate. Don't know if they can find a job. Don't know if they can transition their business to a new location. Imagine a resource center, my brothers and sisters, that, that provides answers to questions that reflect the realities of what must and will come to be. A resource center, literal and virtual and spiritual. The plan will be to build a team of individuals with diverse skill sets that are willing to share the skills that are necessary for the furtherance of set apart Yasharal from education, pre-K to high school, to post education, whether it be through traditional or non-traditional means, but set apart ones who have found favor from the most high and have come into positions where they have found favor and they bring resources, skills, abilities, and finances to an awakening set apart nation. The plan consists of purchasing land in Virginia, which I believe the Commonwealth of Virginia will be an exit point for those in the Western Hemisphere. Many will migrate from Canada and South America and move towards the United States. A great multitude will ultimately come and converge at that exit point. Pray and watch, my brothers and sisters. Proof and evidence will come. In this plan, we will identify and support safe zones as it relates to migration. Places where if you're moving from one state to the next, you may need to stop and rest and refuel and be energized. Fellowship, safe zones. You see, I believe there will be some people ordered to shelter in place and be the last messages that individuals will hear coming from the Almighty Father, literally. My brothers and sisters, the plan consists of identifying these safe zones to provide guidance and support for completing the journey, what to expect, what to bring, when to leave things behind and when to know that you will be cared for and receive the necessary sustainable things such as food, water, clothing, shelter, to provide guidance for the inner court of life. The inner court represents the children of the Almighty Father. All set apart children who seek to do the will of the Almighty Father, who are drawn by the Almighty Yahuwah in Yahushua's name. I say to you, my brothers and sisters, pray and watch, for we will see some of the most phenomenal things occurring as days move forward. Are you ready, my brothers and sisters? Are you ready to make the necessary decisions are you ready to be disciplined, fashioned to the point where you would shout, hallelujah. 
I'm glad I made that decision. Are you ready, Oyasharal? Highlights. Provide guidance for the inner court life. <coughs> My brothers and sisters. The time is now to not worry about what the wicked are doing, what the evil ones are doing. The time is now to learn not to be promoting and always showing all the wicked stuff. Let them be. They have their judgment. They have their way of life. Don't push and try to push Yahuwah into a house that is not his. Yasharal, the inner court life that brings about teachings and instructions, that brings about joy, worshiping and praising. <coughs> My brothers and sisters, this is a serious and true life. And once we are drawn to that set apart mountain, the true Mount Sinai, that region, once we have been gathered from the four corners of the earth, my brothers and sisters, we will learn what we're supposed to be doing as we wait the physical return of Yahushua. <coughs> we will see the two witnesses of Revelation emerge sooner than we expect. We will grow to discern what their mission is. We will grow to understand what their words are. Their message is to Yasharal, to bring Yasharal closer together. In spite of all government and nationalities that fight and war against the Almighty Father Yahuwah, the two witnesses will execute the dynamics of things that will prove to reflect discipline towards Yasharal, prove to reflect promised vengeance that the Almighty Father has spoken, and Execute words that will inform Yasharal that the promised wrath that he has promised will come. Many think that the two witnesses' job is just to go attack the other nations, the wicked nations. No, my brothers and sisters, the two witnesses of Revelation's mission is to execute the promises that the Almighty Father had by spreading the message to Yasharal. And they will cut through all the things that have posed as obstacles and be heard until such a time that they are killed by the anti-Messiah. Make no mistake, my brothers and sisters, we are that end time generation. And those that will wait, the two witnesses will go into Jerusalem before they are killed to inform those who are our brothers and sisters who think they were supposed to go to Jerusalem to wait on the Messiah. They will be in Jerusalem saying, you're in the wrong place. You need to get to where those have been gathered from the four corners of the earth. They will say, this is what you need to do. You need to be as new wineskins and receive the new wine of instruction and move. They will seek. And not to seek, they will move in obedience to announce the final instructions before the physical return of Yahushua Mashiach. Pray and watch, O Yasharal. My brothers and sisters, the 144,000, Abrahim, commonly known as Hebrews, in great multitude, consisting of Abrahim or Hebrews and Gentiles. Abrahim, go ye me other nations, made one by Yahushua Mashiach. There will be an emergence of diverse individuals, people from different nations. In the name of Yahushua, pray and watch, O Yasharal. End times are here. I say this and I say this often. Discipline reveals plans and preparation. Discipline reveals plan and preparations. As they are unfolding, we will find and identify those who have a ready mind and soul to respond to the spirit of Yahushua working within us. Discipline reveals plans and preparation. And I say to you, my brothers and sisters, 
Judgment brings discipline. When judgment is rendered and executed, then we must decide, will we obey or fight against what is ordered? Are you ready, O Yasharal? Count the costs, my brothers and sisters, for every decision that we make will yield a fruit, a fruit in set apartness, or a fruit that brings pain and regret. Count the costs, O Yasharal. The time is now to get involved. Get involved as the Most High is directing you. Whether it be through intercessory prayer or physical actions, the time is now. And we will witness benefits and consequences across the board. We will learn how to rise up when we stumble and fall, my brothers and sisters. If for any reason, you believe you are receiving something that contributes or reinforcing the need to draw closer to the Almighty Father. Consider subscribing, my brothers and sisters. Consider sharing. Will you subscribe? Will you share? Have these words reached you for a reason? And I would say this. I believe there are many of us who are receiving words from the Almighty Father. And I believe there are thieves among us who will steal the words that are brought forth, whether they be in wisdom or life, who will take the message for their own self gain to raise their, their identity and individualism up. Beware of those that come across as one being used by the most high. Ask them questions when they present something questionable. Ask many questions. Inquire, where did you get that? And you will see that some will say the spirit of Yahushua stirred within me. And they will be genuine enough to where your spirit will receive and yield to it. Some will just echo the words of discernment. The father told me, I just know because I'm a more, a pastor, a bishop, a seer, a prophet. Ask questions, my brothers and sisters. I assure you that your spirit will be capable of discerning whether that person is just stealing content from people or are they bearing witness to the stuff that is true and passing on the truth. Pray and watch. Remember with the ark, when the Philistines stole the ark thinking that they would have the power Much pain and regret came and they returned that art. If you doubt these words, my brothers and sisters, pray and watch. I ask for you to subscribe and share. If you believe that these messages do not have any life, don't listen to any more messages if that's what you believe. But I can't order you not to listen because I'm saying to you, O Yasharal, that I believe the spirit of Yahuwah brings correction and I believe there are times individuals will yield to reproof and correction. And there are times when we will seek forgiveness and demonstrate what it is to exercise the power of the blood of the lamb and rise up in the set apart spirit of Yahuwah. As for your support, I ask for you to consider contributing, whether it be resources, supplies, financial help, the plan that I believe the most high is forging within me, has brought to me. There are those who will confirm and be partakers in such. There are those who will take this plan and they may be reinforcing it for what they feel or believe they are compelled to do. But I know this, O Yasharal, in due season, there will be those who will say hallelujah. They were actively participants, actively involved, actively gathered by the power and might of the Almighty Father. There are those who can say, I supported it, and though I may die in my physical location here, I helped prop up uh, an awakening set apart nation. I helped them to move in the direction of the Almighty Father. And there will be those with a different story. I set up Cash App under White Rose family, my brothers and sisters. I ask that you consider financially contributing 
I also set up PayPal. If you prefer to use that or another means, reach out to me, my brothers and sisters, and I will develop a communication with you to keep you abreast on the progress. Count the costs, Oyasharal. Get involved. Seek to discern where the spirit of Yahuwah is directing you. On that note, my prayer for Yasharal is that you grow strong, that we grow strong in discernment, and that we learn how to respond with obedience to the Almighty Father, with accuracy and precision. Until next time, O Yasharal, stay tuned. There is much more to come in the coming days. Shalom.